What's up YouTube, this is Tube Digger. This video is the first in a 10 part series where I'm gonna go into depth about some of my favorite features of the Roland MC707 Groovebox. This particular video will go into depth on how to program the scatter effect using the scatter edit. Scatter should not be overlooked or written off as some cheap DJ style performance beat repeat type of effect. It's actually highly programmable and can lead to some excellent creative results both in the studio and in a live performance setting. Before I get into this video, I'd like to thank all my current subscribers, anyone that's liked and shared my videos, anyone that follows and supports me on social media, and of course, anyone that's been kind enough to donate to this channel. If you'd like to do that yourselves, there's a PayPal link in the description, and I'll be forever grateful for your help. If you'd like private lessons with myself, please contact me at tubedigger at gmail.com for more details. These lessons can be conducted over Skype, Google Hangouts or Zoom, whichever you prefer. So please contact me at tubedigger at gmail.com. My email address is also shown in the description below. So to use scatter mode, we simply press the scatter button on the bottom right of the device. And now we're in scatter mode. You can see the pads will update from what they previously were in notes mode. And to actually edit the deeper parameters of every pad to apply the different scatter effects, we need to press and hold shift and then press the scatter button again. And now we're in the scatter editor. So this is the scatter edit, and we can edit every single scatter effect independently for each and every pad. If we're not currently focused in that area, we can use the directional arrows and just move across to focus on the pad area. And then we can press any one of the 16 pads and press enter and edit its deeper scatter settings. And they're all completely independent to give us a wide range of performance and compositional effects. So once you've pressed enter when you're focused on a particular pad, you can now edit the specific deeper settings for that particular pad. And as you can see, the first window here is setting. This is where we set up the pad color for the particular pad, which can be really handy, particularly in a performance setting where you need to remember a lot of things. This can help you group together particular effects. So let's say on several pads you had the MFX and some other pads had re-trigger effects or re-pitching effects. You can color them to suit your needs. And this is really handy to have. But just from using the machine quite a lot, you do get used to this and it kind of becomes a music memory thing and it's quite easy to remember. But it's quite a nice facility or option to have. Next to that, we have mask on or off. In the off position, this means that we'll hear both the scatter effect and the dry signal. So the scatter effect will be applied over the top. If we switch mask to on, it will mask the dry signal and we'll only hear the scatter effect. Now with it set to off, this is quite good if you're using delays and reverbs and you kind of want to add that into the mix. 
but for beat repeats and re-triggering things, I personally prefer to have mask on so you only hear the re-triggered version and it makes for a much cleaner effect. This second window is labelled reverse, which is kind of strange because reverse is actually the furthest right option in this window, but that basically will reverse any audio when you trigger this particular pad that you've set reverse to on. In the middle here we've got mute, so we can just simply use this as a mute. Because we aren't in the mute mode we don't get access to mutes, so we can actually use a pad or one of these pads in the scatter mode to actually mute our audio. So this last setting over on the left here is size, and I'm not going to go too deep into this, but this does have an effect on the re-trigger values which are shown on the next page. So as said, the re-trig or the effect of these re-triggers do get affected by the size parameter which was on the previous page, the reverse page, but these basically allow you to set a re-trigger value from 1 to 32 beats. So obviously at 32 that's going to be really fast and a very high repeating level and that comes all the way down to 1. We've also got re-trigger glide, so you can glide up from the lowest value all the way up to the highest value and vice versa from the highest value down to the lowest value. And this is really good for kind of tape stop type effects but with a bit of a twist. And this last parameter on the end is hold. So this will just basically hold the re-trigger effect and we can choose any value from one up to 16 steps, which is basically a bar. So this next window gives us options to affect the pitch with the scatter effect. So over on the farthest left here, we've got the option to offset the pitch chromatically by plus 24 or minus 24 semitones. In the middle we've got a pitch fine tuning which is handy if something doesn't sound quite right and you just want to fine tune the pitch to make it sound correct or indeed you can actually make it sound inharmonic if that's what you want. The next option here is pitch bend so we can choose a pitch bend percentage from anything from 0% all the way up to 400%. If we set that at 100% then no pitch bend is applied. The last option we've got here is pitch glide. So again, we can glide up or we can glide back down to a particular pitch using this option here. And this works well also as a kind of a tape stop effect, particularly when you use it in conjunction with the re-trigger glide. This next window, very, very simple. This allows you to pan this particular effect when you trigger this particular pad. And in the middle, we've got settings for the actual level. So if you actually wanted to just momentarily turn down the level of a particular track, or the entire output, depending on where you've got your scatter effects routed to, you can use one pad to do that. And this last option is level glide. So we can actually apply fade in and fade out type effects using a particular glide amount with this particular parameter. This next window pertains to the MFX and also the sending and returning of effects via the send and return jacks at the rear of the machine. I'm not going to go too heavily into that because I've not used that facility or that feature myself. So we've got options to apply an amount of MFX1 and MFX2 and these are specifically the MFX that you set up within the scatter. They're separate from the track effects and the master effects. This last parameter which is dry Again, it doesn't really go into too much detail in the manual, but I believe it applies to the amount of dry and wet signal which is heard when using the send and return jacks. But I can't be 100% on that because the manual doesn't really go into that much detail. This next page is the envelope page. So you can see we've got two parameters here, attack and decay. And this basically pertains to the level of the effect coming in and fading out once it's applied. So this is the last page in the pad settings for the scatter effect and this is called grain. This basically allows you to select a value from 1 to 16, so this pertains to the beats in the step sequencer. So let's say we've got a snare that falls on step 5 and we set this to 5. This will constantly repeat the snare, providing we've got a re-trigger value as an example, and it will re-trigger that no matter where we are in the sequence. And when if we set it to another beat where there's a particular sound on that beat, it will just repeat that particular sound. If we've got it set to default, it will constantly scan through the incoming audio or the audio that the scatter is being applied to 
and that's quite a nice way to remix your beats and you can kind of hear me doing this in the first audio example at the start of this video with the kind of rave track that I give an example of. So this is quite a nice remix thing, particularly if you use it in the alternate mode with the main scatter button. Just some final points to mention about scatter edit. You can see underneath the pads that we've got some of the parameters that I showed you in the deeper settings when you press edit on a particular pad or the MFX. And if you press the function button, this switches between page one and page two. So we've got two pages of quick access parameters for the pads and the MFX. And this obviously saves you from pressing a particular pad or selecting a pad or the MFX and having to press enter to access the parameters. So it's just a quick access facility shown on the main scatter edit page. We just jump over to the MFX and press enter, we get a full suite of parameters to edit just as we do when we edit the MFX for the track or the master effects for the entire output of the machine. Now if you're on the main page of the scatter edit and you choose either MFX1 or MFX2, you can see when you press enter and go into the deeper parameters, you still get access to either MFX1 or MFX2. So you don't have to come back out and choose MFX1 or MFX2, whichever one you choose, either effect can be edited from within the actual deeper settings pages. So just to the right of the MFX1 and the MFX2 settings, we've got a mode selection parameter. So basically scatter can be engaged with the main scatter button and we can have this in two different modes. So the default mode is momentary. So that's basically if we press the scatter button, it will engage the scatter effects for as long as we hold that button, providing that we've got some particular pads that are programmed into the step sequencer. So this basically allows us to have multiple different effects that we've programmed on different pads across 16 beats. If we've got it in alternate mode, this is a latched mode. So if we press the scatter button in this mode, those effects which we've programmed into the 16 steps will be constantly affecting our audio. So it's just the difference between a momentary and a latched mode. So the parameter underneath that is set and this allows us to set particular global timing parameters for the scatter edit which will obviously affect any timing parameters you've got for re-triggers on the different pads. And we've got two different pages again we can choose between those by pressing the function button. And then just over here on the left, we've got the position selection button, which allows us to choose a particular output, whether that's track one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or eight, or the entire mix out, or PC, which is computer audio, if we're using the 707 as an audio interface, or indeed the external inputs for any incoming audio. And finally, this last parameter over on the bottom right is the scatter browser. This is really handy because we can actually choose a different scatter setup from a different project. So if you've got another project on your SD card in your 707, if you can remember that particular project and the scatter settings and you think, oh, that'd be quite nice to use on this particular project, 
we can simply go into the scatter browser and choose a particular project. And we can actually select different pads to be applied to other pads. So we can mix and match the pads that have got different scatter effects on them from project to project. But most of the time, personally, I scroll all the way down to the bottom and choose all and import the entire scatter setup from one project if I want to use it in the current project that I'm working in. So that's pretty much how to edit the scatter effect of the Roland MC707 Groovebox. As said before, this is the first in a series of 10 videos where I'm going to cover my favourite features of this excellent device. Once again, please like, share and subscribe if you haven't done so already. If you like private lessons with myself, please contact me at tubedigger at gmail.com. My email address is in the description box below. And of course, if you'd like to contribute to this channel, please also use the link in the description, which is www.paypal.me forward slash tubedigger. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. This is Tube Digger and I'm out.